Oh, Number we're seven. telling. Remember names. Whenever you meet someone I'm the worst that you'll meet again, or even if there's just a chance Ooh, that you're Look you at that Gooba! Them, Hold it's on. Important. Yo, what's up guys, it's Prince Charming. Today we're gonna be checking out psychology hacks you can use to control the situation. Yes guys, we're gonna be going to some psychology, some, some mind tricks and brain teasers. We're gonna watch a video that'll basically teach you how to control people, how to control minds. That way, whenever you go up to the girl that, that curved you the other day, you know, you just give her a little bit of trick and then like, you know, she's gonna be under your arm the next second. Cause you know, that's how Prince Charming gets all his girls. Y'all thought it was cause of these devilish good looks. <laughs> I just know how to use this more than I know how to use. <laughs> no, I, I know how to use both. Don't get me wrong. No, but go ahead and comment a psychology hack, you know, like, like, what do you use on your parents whenever they want to go out, but you want to go out? Like, what tricks or like, how do you, how do you trick people? How do you control people? You know how women control people. We all know how women control men. It, oh, and it always works. It always works. So make sure you subscribe and get me to 100k subscribers by my birthday on July 28th, guys. If you can do that for me, if you can get me 100k by July 28th, we'll do like a giveaway, giveaway gift cards, PS4s, Xboxes, the whole gist. But we gotta reach 100k by July 28th. Hey, so make sure you subscribe now to so make sure you do that like comment on this video and let's check out these psychology hacks that control situations throw them off their game oh that's if step you're playing one. a sport or a game and your opponent you have to get in their head there's a way to throw them off without them even realizing it ask them about their technique asking them how exactly they're doing as well as they're doing takes them out of the zone. Oh, that's that's so creative. That's so devilish. So essentially all you gotta do is ask them about their technique. Like, how are you beating me? Can you like show me how you're beating me? Like your technique? And then they're gonna be thinking about it too much that they're not even gonna be realizing that they're messing up. Ah. And back into their own head. And anyone who has ever been in the zone can tell you that your head is not where you want to be. Truly hitting mm -hmm. your stride in a game is all about not consciously considering all of the things you theoretically know and practiced and just effortlessly putting them into Get action. Get your head in the game. Humans have two kinds of not memory. Up your ass. Implicit memory and explicit memory. Implicit memory is long-term and doesn't require conscious thought. Driving a car. This is where you want to be for games. Explicit memory is what you're causing them to fall back into. It deals with conscious recall. Don't over-negotiate. Mm. Negotiating deals is a mixture of art and science that some people seem to excel at and others just stumble through. One way to help your cause is to stop talking after you've stated your position. Unnecessary words make your position seem weaker by making it look like you don't even understand it yourself. Okay, so essentially what they're saying is all you gotta do is say your price and then just keep quiet, you know, wait for them to come to you. That kind of does work because whenever you don't show somebody attention or like you just stop talking to them, you'll kind of notice how they'll come after you more and more because like they're like, wait, why is he showing me attention? Why is he not hitting me up? Yo, this can be applied in so many different situations. It's not even over negotiating a deal. It can be over your real life. Like guys, this is just pure facts he's speaking. Okay. Over explaining can also make you appear less confident and it's just as common for people to talk too much when they're nervous as it is to completely shut up. Yep. Basically, after you've given them what they need to know about your offer, everything you say after that isn't doing you any favors. Number 8. Eye Contact oh, Figuring out that just eye how contact. much eye contact you're supposed to make in a conversation can be awkward. Especially for the sorts of people you who gotta, might not you be gotta, huge you fans gotta, of having conversations with people they don't know in the first place. You don't want to like Dale Carnegie, them. the author of the famous book How to Win Friends and Influence People, offered this solution. Look into someone's eyes long enough to tell what color they are before you look away. Ah. This feels like a natural and conversational amount of eye contact to make. A similar trick is to imagine a triangle that connects the other person's eyes and mouth and shift your gaze between the three points every five to ten seconds. This wow. will make you appear interested in the conversation. So imagine a triangle on their face in like five seconds here, five seconds there, five seconds here. <laughs> but but <laughs> just don't give them daggers. Big problem what people encounter is the fact that they think more eye contact is better. If someone is just staring you down like and they don't break the line of sight, it just gets weird. You gotta know how long to look and then like when to look away because you can't just stare at them the entire time when they're telling a story. That's just awkward. Even if you'd rather be playing video games or eating a sandwich. Oh, Helen. Remember names. Whenever you meet someone I'm the worst that you'll meet again, or even if there's just a chance Ooh, that look you look at that Gooba. Them, Hold it's on. important to remember their name. I know y'all saw People that. People are more likely to want to help you if they feel valued by you. And the start of making someone feel valued is to remember their name. This is because by not remembering someone's name, whether you intend to or not, you're telling them that to you, they're just one of many. For example, That's every true. student in the class knows the teacher's name. 
Mm -hmm. But the teacher may not remember the name of every student. Guys, like, I am the absolute worst at names. Like, for the life of me, I cannot remember names. And it's not because, like, I'm rude or, like, just because I don't, like, care to learn your name. It's just honestly because I cannot remember it. Like, in college, you can meet somebody, and then 10 seconds later in the conversation, after they just said their name, you will forget their name. It's just because, like, you don't really care. You don't, It's not like you don't care to store in your head. It's just... You're, you're, you, ugh. it's so hard to explain. When y'all grow older, you'll know exactly what I mean. You just meet too many people for you to remember every single name. This is because each student has only one teacher. The teacher has many students. Mm -hmm. So by remembering someone's name, you're showing them that they're the only person who fills that role for you. Chew gum for tests. Provided that really? your loud chewing noises doesn't cause your classmates to physically attack you. Scientists have discovered that chewing gum right before a test could improve your score. Don't go smacking it like a black girl. the flow of blood to the head, which can My help your memory. Daddy. While the effects last only a few minutes, researchers believe that it could prove useful. In the study, students who chewed gum immediately before the test recalled 25 to 50 percent more than the students who didn't chew gum. Wow! And the students who chewed gum during the test. So, do I need to pick up a pack of Wrigley's? <laughs> some five gum like come on like who why couldn't you tell me this fact when i actually did take my finals in college i would have had the hook up on spearmint <laughs> fuck adderall <laughs> researchers have called the phenomena mastication induced arousal that sounds dirty as hell or similar to that of mild exercise unfortunately chewing gum doesn't burn as many calories as going for a jog foot in the door this infamous psychological marketing method, known as the foot in the door technique, <gasps> operates on the principle that people are so more likely to agree to something them. big if you can first get them to agree to something small. Social scientists call oh. it successive <laughs> approximations. I took a literal. If you can land a small yes, you're going to have a better chance of getting a big yes. To study this idea, psychologists in California called women and asked them if they would be willing to answer a few questions about the household products that they use. A few days later, they oh, called I love again, house. this I love time house. asking if they could send five or six men into the house to go through cupboards and storage places as part of a two-hour enumeration of household products. The women who were called previously were twice as likely to agree to the second request than were the women who had not been called previously. So the next time you need a favor, consider starting small. Mm, Number four, start asking small. questions. Talking to other human beings can be difficult for some human beings. It can seem like a daunting task, and it can be almost physically painful to sit through an awkward silence. To be honest, me. The best way to naturally start conversations and maintain them so that you can avoid dying of terminal awkwardness is simply to ask questions. Guys, listen to what he is saying. I know I'm pausing and you're like, oh, how can I listen to what he's saying if you're pausing it? No, but seriously, whenever you're talking to a girl, and this is for guys, because I don't really, I mean, it can work for a guy too, but this is really for a guy talking to a girl. So if you really want to like get a good conversation with her, ask her questions about her. Everybody, and I mean everybody, likes to talk about themselves, but you cannot say, tell me about yourself. You have to ask specific questions, because if you ask anybody, tell me about yourself, everybody goes blank because they really don't know where to start or they don't know what you want to know. So ask her specific questions like, what do you want to be where you grow up, when you study in school, like stuff like that. Everybody, and I mean everybody, likes to talk about themselves so you can never go wrong. And then you can ask for the nudes. <laughs> People's favorite topic of conversation is themselves and questions allow them to take the conversation. I promise I did not direction. watch this video. This is how interviews can last for hours and hours. We're like because this. Because nobody knows anything better than themselves. Bro, I... Number I'm three, too smart. First dates. While many people think that the ideal place for a first date is a movie theater or a coffee shop, Corny. science can suggest that you would be better off taking your date on a roller coaster. Ah. Known as the misattribution of arousal, this psychological idea describes the process wherein people unconsciously mistake what is actually causing them to feel excited. The roller coaster is what's actually making your date's head flood with endorphins in their bloodstream with <gasps> adrenaline, but they just might think that it's actually you. An interesting test done on this idea okay. had men cross either a suspension bridge or a normal sturdy bridge to get to the woman on the other side, who asked them some questions and gave them her personal phone number they could call if they had questions about the study. A greater percentage of the men who had gone across the suspension bridge called the woman, a result that the researchers attributed to the misattribution of arousal. So if I want to get a female, all I gotta do is, t is just like get her endorphins running. I mean, I know, man, I know many ways I can do that. <laughs> Guys, this guy is speaking facts. I hope you have your like notepad and pencil. You're writing this down. Smiling. Smiling, it turns out, can be a powerful psychological tool. 
While everyone knows that but people smile when they are happy, few people know that smiling can also cause you to feel happy. In a study investigating this, subjects were told to either raise their cheeks, meaning smile, or contract their eyebrows, meaning frown, when they were presented with certain images. Subjects found the images that they viewed while smiling to be more pleasant than the ones they viewed while they were frowning. Mm. So if you're trying to cheer yourself up, smile. So this goes into tell with like what my mom tells me all the time. If somebody's mad at you and you get them to laugh, they can't be mad at you no more because they're smiling, they're happy. You can't be happy and smiling and then mad at the same person at the same time. So if somebody's ever mad at you or like they're annoyed by you, try to get them to laugh or smile and I promise you, I promise you, they will ease up on you. You'll be more likely to smile without having to force it pretty soon. Interestingly, people are also less you don't likely get an to get iPhone mad with your they Nokia? Can see angry face in the mirror. <laughs> Brick. People tend to underestimate the effects of their physical body on their mental state. Because... At a library, mm. researchers cut in front of people who were in line to use a photocopy machine. Not because they are really busy, but for science. They would then ask the person they cut either, excuse me, I have five pages, may I use the Xerox machine? Excuse me, I have five pages, may I use the Xerox machine because I'm in a rush? Or, excuse me, I have five pages, may I use the Xerox machine because I have to make copies. The first question, may I, only got people to let them cut 60% of the time. However, the second and third options, the because wow. questions, got people to let them cut in line over 90% of the time. Excuse me, can you send me nudes because I think you have a slamming body. <laughs> hey, use that line right now and tweet me pictures at Prince of Hawkum. Text your crush that and see, see what you get back. <laughs> Oh no, don't listen to Prince Charming. He's only setting you up for failure. That never works. That's a Hail Mary, guys. That's what us guys call a Hail Mary. The third question isn't even a real reason because I have to make copies. Well, everyone who uses a photocopy machine has to make copies. <laughs> the person that was cut in line obviously had to make copies. The word because has a unique effect on the human mind and should be considered the next That's time crazy. you're asking someone for something. People are more likely to help you if you phrase your request as an offer. If you don't get off the phone, would you like to help me as opposed to please help to work. Me. These 10 seemingly simple things were lurking under your nose and infiltrating your brain your whole life without you even realizing it. Yo, so I really honestly enjoyed that video. It really taught me a lot, even though I knew like half the stuff on there. Like, especially the thing about asking questions about them. Like, I promise you guys, I did not watch this video beforehand. I just know this already because like, I took some psychology classes when I was younger. But I hope you enjoyed that video and I hope you can use some of these tricks to, you know, control situations. Make sure you subscribe, get me to 100,000 subscribers by my birthday on July 28th, guys. I know we can do it, so subscribe right now. My name is Prince Hawkum. Stay charming, my friends.